All right. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Now here we have uh, an examination, old examination paper, and uh, here he says to you, an element in plane stress at a surface of a large machine is subjected to stresses sigma x equals to 3000 psi, sigma y equals to 5000 psi, and tau x y is also equals to 5000 psi. And these are all positive, and this positive 5 plus 5000 means that uh, it is anti-clockwise. So this chapter we have done basically these two chapters you have done with uh, Madam Sumaya, but I think it's my responsibility to let you uh, uh, make generate your more interest uh, that uh, how basically you simulate uh, in uh, virtual environment uh, the stress element a two two D stress element. Okay, but this was an actual fi uh, final exam question for in, in 2017 uh, using Mohr circle you need to calculate on on paper. You need to calculate on paper and validate the results through the graph paper. Okay, but uh, this is what you're doing it on the graph paper. But here you'll be validating it on the software. Uh, stresses acting on an element, and again, once you, you can solve this and get the results, but then you have to basically uh, rotate an element at an angle of theta equals to 20 degrees. So this means that you'll be rotating it in an anti-clockwise direction because theta is plus 20. If I write it minus 20, then you will be it in a clockwise direction. You need to calculate the principal stresses uh, and the principal angles, okay? Uh, which means uh, the stresses and the respective angles at rotations, sigma 1, sigma 2, the maximum shear stresses and the shear stress angles and two that are intensive stresses are always at a point constant regard to element to rotate at theta equals 20. That is uh, uh, true. So uh, this problem, we can basically solve it uh, through MDS also. If you look at it, this problem, you have got uh, uh, these uh, Mohr circle. You've got this Mohr circle over here. And uh, what was our uh, result was uh, 15,000 PSI. So you can write it as 1, 5, double, 0, triple 0, 15,000, 15, 000, 15 uh, KPI. What was the normal uh, uh, sigma y in the y direction? Here it is. It was also it was 5000, and uh, the shear stress was also 5000. But you have to make it. It's it, it's basically counterclockwise. Okay. If I write this, it will be on the other plane. But we have to write it counterclockwise because this is positive. All right. Now, if you look at, uh, you need to basically uh, here it is. It can also come in the exam as MPA also, but we will be right, taking it as a PSI, okay? Because uh, it is in PSI. So you can compute it over here. And uh, again, this is your orientations, principal stress orientation, maximum stress here, uh, stress orientations. What I have asked you. And this is the angles, which means the stress element is at zero degree. Okay, so you can also get the details. The details are being shown. Sigma n. This is again what was asked in the question. The angle 45, sigma 1 calculated, sigma 2 calculated. This is the center of the circle. This is the radius, which is tau xy max. The radius for the shear stress max, as you already know. But then they ask you a further thing over here is that. Uh, if you look at it, uh, he says the stresses that you need to calculate acting on an element which is inclined at an angle of theta equals to 20 degrees. So how do we do that? If you go here, he says the theta is 20 degrees and it is, if you do this now, so here it is. Theta is equal to 20 to the uh, on the element it will be 20, but uh, on the graph it is coming out to be equal to 40 degrees. And this is anti-clockwise. So now if they compute, uh, basically, so you get uh, sigma n, which means sigma x dash in tension, tau basically uh, sigma t, see, sigma x is this, sigma y in tension is 2555.8. And uh, uh, basically, tau x dash y dash because it's 20 degrees, it comes out to be equal to 616.3 psi counterclockwise on the n phase. So, here you basically calculated it and uh, your principal stress angles, maximum in, in shear stress orientations is there, and uh, 
the details have been shown to you and then uh, if you want to go for the uh, 3d more stress cycle this is basically again 3d more stress circle is basically you have got uh, three circles sigma 1 sigma 2 and sigma 3 also coming into being and you will be doing this in your stress analysis but just to let you know here it is currently zero it was not a 3d more stress circle these are your principal stresses sigma 1 and sigma 2 they are very important that is you have uh, madam have taught you uh, taught you really well the failure theories i remember i have, uh, I have given her my notes and uh, from then you uh, because these are very important from the design point of view so the same data okay we do if, if we assume the material as ductile we can go a further step ahead in the uh, solution if we want so So let's go for uh, the analysis option. These plain strains and strain rosettes 0, 40, 90, 60, you will be doing this uh, uh, for your uh, final year stress analysis in which you will be studying strain gauges. So you can, it, this software will be helpful in solving. Uh, uh, definite numericals always come yeah, because when I was teaching uh, stress analysis, I used to give the same problem with Dr. Maas is similar so it can help you in there also and uh, for the, the, the thing is the uh, failure theories now now for example uh, if I say that you want to compute uh, the, uh, the yield stress and your material is stainless steel okay for this problem of yours so if the material is ductile through maximum shear stress theory teresa you have studied it uh, it it shows you over here and your basically uh, the yield stress and your basically values that were coming for the sigma 1 and for the sigma 2 they were the maximum and for the material uh, uh, when the factor of safety of 2.1 is being applied and yield stress of 30000 psi this is the point of locus coming over here which means if your material is safe it has to be within this the, this area it has to be within this area so if it is coming over here it means that uh, you are in the safe zones okay you are in the safe zones if uh, 17,000 042 17,000 and otherwise 29 uh, 55.8 five so it's okay so if if you use one mysis it is still uh, you are still within the no, uh, within this zone and if you are out which means it material has failed and uh, you have to uh, basically make counteract for the same material but if we assume for example that uh, the Results are for uh, these results are for brittle materials, sigma x, sigma y, and the element is brittle in nature. Then you, you can also use your safety uh, parameters like 5000. You can also use your safety parameters for a uh, brittle material. You can use this theory, and if you use this theory, uh, 170711 and 29829, and you are still sig within sigma 1, sigma 2, and again uh, the material is stainless steel. You can also go for and you can use uh, you will come close if you if i use titanium and i compute you see you go in because titanium is very very robust material using aer aeroplane structures aircraft structures so as you go uh, uh, separate move away from here you are getting basically to the limits of sigma 1 and sigma 2 but if you are very close it means you are very very safe so but if i use uh, this Oh, see what happens. You are failed because wood, wood, wood is a no match to titanium. So it is coming red. Your ultimate stress. So this is how you basically understand and get uh, failures, uh, which I think is going to be. And our favorite material is A36 structural, very much used in our Paksa. So this is what it is. But still, you are in safe. So this is how you use these theories 
more four behavior criteria. Again, all these four or five theories we've already studied it, understood it, and I hope it will be uh, quite helpful to you. Uh, just uh, to get more knowledge and more interest in the subject because when you simulate it uh, I believe that seeing is believing with this uh, software so we, here we have understood everything through FEA and uh, done ANSYS and then you basically have also studied and done uh, in quite details the, the MDS software uh, we have done Fletcher, we have done determinate prop beams, we have done section properties and we have done more circle so I hope uh, this will be quite uh, beneficial to you. It will have uh, increased your uh, knowledge of the subject. Uh, by doing this, uh, it will basically help you to understand uh, the subject. And basically, again, the most important uh, thing is that uh, all this knowledge that you've done will basically assist you in doing your CEP. That is what I, I would like to, I'm doing all this hard work for you guys. That uh, you will be able to understand the complex engineering problem then apply it. these resources uh, will be help you uh, in your complex engineering problem.